So this is a quick overnight adventure that wasn't supposed to happen, um, but I'm glad it did. So basically I was pretty much planning on going up to the Uinta Mountains again to a certain place that is special to me to kind of overcome some difficult memories from the past and also relive some really good ones. But that didn't happen and the reason why is I kind of just ran out of gas. I was packing last night for this trip, trying to plan ahead. I was watching the weather in the Uinas. Uh, the forecast was, there's a cold front moving in and the forecast for the Uinta Mountains was 60s during the day and upper 30s at night with a 20% chance of thunderstorms and possibly even snow, which actually sounded very adventurous to me. It sounded really fun because uh, I figured even if it did snow, that 20% 60s in the day, it's not going to stick around. It's going to melt. Um, it is late August, later August, so there's a good chance of it snowing up there. It can snow anywhere from August all the way through June or even July, sometimes up that high. So basically I went out in my gear shed and I gathered all my gear. By the time it was all together and my list was all checked off and it was ready to go in the pack, um, I was exhausted and I was too tired to pack it. So I went to work last night and when I came home this morning I was exhausted from a pretty stressful night at work uh, between my boss and some behavioral patients. Uh, by the time I got home, I was pretty spent. I just kind of looked at everything on my bedroom floor and said, this isn't happening. I, I've had it. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to make some good food. I'm going to clean my house. I'm going to do some yard work. I'm just going to putter around home. I don't have my kids this weekend, so I figured that was a good backup plan. And then something funny happened. I... I went to bed this morning and I woke up around two or three in the afternoon because I had no reason to get up earlier than that. Uh, and there was a package on my doorstep. And it was to me, but I didn't order it. So I grabbed the package and I opened it and it was from my friend Joe, all the way up in Boise. Uh, he saw my Dean Lake video uh, a couple videos back and noticed that I needed a gear replacement that I I didn't ask for it I didn't I don't even think I said I I think I said in the video that I might need to replace it and get something bigger I can't even remember but I opened the box and inside was a new cook pot titanium cook pot much larger than the one I usually use he noticed that I was having a hard time getting the ramen to fit in the pot and I kept thinking and I don't know if I said it out loud in the video or not but I kept thinking man I really need the same pot but bigger and that's exactly what had shown up on my doorstep and I got so excited over it I texted Joe I thanked him profusely I told him it was made of 100% genuine plastic <laughs> He was worried because he ordered it from overseas. He said it came across the pond. I don't know where from. I thanked him. Um, we had a brief conversation and he said, are you going to get out this weekend? I said, no, it's too late in the day. I slept too long. You know, the Uinas are two and a half hour drive from my house. And by the time I got up there and got set up, it would be dark. It just didn't sound like what I really wanted to do. But that pot really inspired me. I said, maybe I'll get out tomorrow and go for a hike. And he said, yeah, you totally should. And then I just kept thinking about that new cook pot. And I thought, you know, I live right by the mountains. It doesn't have to be the Uinas this time. So what I did is I decided I was going to pack all that gear. I'd, I'd slept for seven, eight hours and I was wide awake and energized. So I gathered up all that gear, I packed it all up. It went in the pack pretty quickly because most of it was there. I did have to run to the store for a couple things, but I don't live too far from the store, so that didn't take very long. And anyway, the next thing I knew, I was out the door and on the road headed up Ogden Canyon to our familiar stomping grounds, the Maples Abandoned Campground. 
and that is where we are staying for the night and I feel so much better just being up here and away from the stresses of the world we'll get to the cook pot in a little bit uh, when I make dinner I'll show it off and we'll talk about it a little bit and uh, in the meantime I have set up camp I brought my usual hammock but I brought a different tarp this time um, I'll talk more about that as well I've got some decent food. I mean, I didn't go out and buy any backpacking food or bring anything special. And the reason why is because when I decided last minute that I was getting out, that I was going to have to just grab whatever I had on hand. And so I did have some things on hand. I brought them with. And I'm looking forward to dinner and breakfast, possibly even lunch up here. I'm not sure. I always say that and I never stay for lunch, but we'll see. You never know. I uh, basically don't have any obligations tomorrow at all, uh, no kids, no anything, and so I can stay up here in the mountains as long as I want. The cold front is blowing in right now, you, you can hear it in the video, you can see it in the trees. The temperatures have been in the 90s and they're going to drop to about the 70s during the day here closer to home, further away from the UNS, and 50s at night. So perfect, perfect camping weather uh, close to home. Up higher, I would have been wearing thermals and bringing extra insulation and extra gear and that kind of thing. So this, this came together nicely. And right now I'm, I'm hungry, I'm really hungry. And guess what, I have no idea what time it is because I forgot one thing. I always forget one thing and it's usually a big deal. But that one thing I forgot isn't really that far away. It's my cell phone. It's back in my car, all the way back at the trailhead. Um, tucked out of sight, but I don't know what I was thinking. I hopped out of the car and threw on my pack and headed down the trail and started filming and got halfway down the trail and it was gold, the golden hour, as they call it, and it was beautiful. And I was like, oh, I gotta take pictures of this. And I reached in my pockets and there was no cell phone. And that's what I take all of my Instagram shots with. So if you go to my Instagram page, you'll see tons of pictures from all my trips on there. I really don't want to hike back to the car just for my cell phone. It's not that far. It's not. It's, it's a mile to the car and a mile back to camp. I really don't feel like hiking another two miles. I came up here to rest and relax. The only part that makes me nervous is my kids are at their mom's and and I told them I wouldn't be out of cell phone range. I usually tell them when I will be so that they don't wonder what's going on if they don't get a text from me or I don't reply to theirs. I told them I would be in range this weekend, so my phone's sitting in my car, hopefully not blowing up with important texts. <laughs> I hate our dependency on technology, but hey, without it, you would not be watching this video right now. So let's take a look around camp. I'll give you the tour the show and tell portion of our video and uh, some of the gear I brought and then we'll tear into making dinner and I have some things to explain with some of the gear that I brought with this time around. So this is an abandoned campground and I've camped here many times. Uh, if you've followed my videos at all you know that I have. I have a secret spot up in here that's I haven't been to in a very long time. I don't know if I'll ever go back but over here is there are basically two three different spots you can camp in this used to be a National Forest Service campground now it's just on National Forest Service land and people camp here semi-regularly but you can see over there uh, through those trees I don't know if you can see that orange right in there that is a tent so there are people over there and they've got a fire going uh, but they're being very quiet. It looks to be a family, so they're not being loud. They're not like my last car camping video with people blasting music. That's not happening. They know I'm here. I know they're there, and we'll just be respectfully distant from each other. Here's the old fire pit. Looks like it's been used a lot. We won't be using that. Um, here's some of the gear I brought. This is the cook pot that Joe gave me. Much bigger than my old one size of my hand. I will go into that at dinner time. This is my, it's called a 
fire gas stove. I can't remember. I haven't used it in years. In fact, the last time I used it was here. Basically, it stacks up and you can cook on it and your fuel. All of these little twigs all over the ground. In fact, I may have cooked dinner once on this or over at that other campground. I think I had a filet mignon wrapped in bacon that I cooked right here once. We're not going to cook on this. We're actually going to just use it as like our fire pit. Just a comforting little fire to have. And the reason why is all of this oak that you see and aspen, none of it burns well. Uh, it's really hardwood and it just smolders and smokes and all of my experience up here and there have been years of it now have taught me not to rely on the wood that is up here. This is my electronics bag, got a headlamp, uh, camera supplies, trail camera, uh, weather radio, charging bank, all the stuff that makes it possible for you to see this video. I brought the citronella candle again. Um, full of bugs. <laughs> Hasn't quite depleted yet, even though I've used it on several trips now. I got my little cup. I borrowed my son's MSR pocket rocket. I've never used one of these, so I've got a bag of water here, full platypus bag of water. I've also got a Nalgene bottle in my backpack full of water. I do have my filter. There's a stream nearby if I run out. I think this will be enough water, but I'm not sure. Not a big deal if we run out. This is my bear hang. This is some blue paracord I found at the dollar store. It's not quite paracord. It's more just rope. But I just thought it was cool. It was blue. Caught my attention. Uh, fire kit. First aid kit. Medications. Bug spray, etc. And hygiene kit. This is a head net for bugs, but I have not seen any up here at all. It has not been one bug land on me. My bushcraft knife it needs to be sharpened. This is actually a tourniquet from the lab at work. And it, I meant to put it in my first aid kit. Over here we have a sit pad. I just have a rock weighing it down. And here's our food bag. And that pretty much covers the table. I have my usual Osprey pack. This time I attached the top portion, uh, mostly because I didn't want to carry that bag of water in, in my hands. It just gave me somewhere extra to put it, so I just threw that on and put the bag of water in the top. There's my Nalgene bottle. Over here, we have my puffer coat, puffy coat, depending on your preference, I guess. I keep saying puffer coat. A lot of people say puffy coat. I'm letting it kind of air out and loft up. And this is our hammock, our usual setup, except this time I have an Outdoor Vitals quilt. And this is also my son's. Um, he recently moved out and left a lot of his gear behind, and he doesn't care if I use it. So, I mean, it's still his, but it's right there in my house. Might as well put it to use. And just an inflatable pillow under quilt. This is the tarp I was talking about. This tarp actually came with this custom hammock that my son had made. Uh, it's not a perfect hang. It's not quite lined up and that's because I'm just relying on trees for support. I was in such a rush to get out the door. I totally spaced bringing any kind of tent stakes to stake it down. So as you can see, I've got it wound around trees. Um, I may have to adjust it depending on wind. I kind of like it a little more closed when bedtime comes, but I don't know. It just depends on how it goes. Just how I feel later. Not a complicated trip at all. Very simple, very quick overnight. So right now I want to start dinner. Uh, dinner is pretty simple. Let's pull everything out and I'll show you what I have. This is mac and cheese with hot dogs, I think, that my buddy Kent freeze dried probably one or two years ago and had it kicking around. He freeze dries and seals his own. There's a date on it, I think. Yeah. May of last year, so it's not that old. Doesn't matter. Freeze dried stuff is good forever. Breakfast, oatmeal, a bunch of snacks, some ramen. Uh, that's some chicken to go in the ramen. Caffeinated cliff bar, regular cliff bar. Uh, 
trail mix, just cocoa, whatever, that's what's in there. Uh, I brought a fast break bar. I usually have these when I'm done backpacking. I think that'll be dessert at dinner. This is just some MRE leftovers and some cocoa. There's, there's things in there like Pop-Tarts and peanut butter and jam, crackers. I'm not going to eat all of this. It's just I kind of grabbed whatever I could last minute and headed out the door. And I forgot to mention, I did bring bear spray. Um, I don't think there's been a bear in this area in decades, but I like having it for, you know, I might have to use it on a person for all I know. Camped up here at the beginning of the season this year with my kids. I mentioned this in another video, but we camped in that campground over there, that campsite over there. And it was so peaceful like this all evening. I made a huge mistake, a rookie mistake. And for the first time ever, I decided we were not going to hang our food in the trees. Uh, basically, we climbed in our tents. We settled in for the night. And I immediately heard the clang of my cook pot hitting the ground. And I asked the boys, are you guys in your tent? And they were like, yeah, because they heard it too. An entire family of raccoons invaded our camp and got into all of the food I left on the table. They took off with some granola bars. I tore open the hot cocoa. They got into the dog food. They really liked the dog food. The Scraps was with us on that trip, and uh, it was just chaos. I chased them out of camp three, four different times until about three in the morning they finally realized all the food was in the tree, nothing that smelled like anything was down here, and they moved on. So tonight, we will make sure everything is cleaned up. There we have it. Let's tear into dinner. I'm starving. So this cook pot literally showed up on my doorstep today. He said it was from across the pond. I don't know if it's British or Chinese. Probably Chinese, but it's identical to my other one. I've got a camp towel in here, a lighter. Here's our stove. I've got foil for a wind block or whatever else. And I've got my fuel. And as you can see, this is a full-size canister. And it easily nests inside this monster pot. And this pot does not weigh much at all. I'll go home and weigh this and throw up on the screen exactly how much it weighs. It's got the markings, milliliters and ounces on the side. It's got a solid handle. Solid... I don't know, handle, <laughs> two handles to drink with, to pour with. Um, I prefer to have my drinks in, in this. Um, I will heat up my water in this, but put, pour it into this because I don't want this tarnish wearing off. So I don't, I don't put this over my stove directly. I use the cook pot for that. This is so dull. My kids and I both have been using it and using it. The, looks like the tip of it is pretty flat too. This thing has been well used over the years and my sharpener recently uh, broke on me, if that's even possible. So I need to get a new sharpener. You can see, there's the uh, close-up version of Uncle Kent's amazing and delicious mac and cheese with hot dogs. <laughs> that's that's a pretty good serving. That's just right for me, I think, and how hungry I am. I'm gonna have to guess with this. Maybe just like cereal, kind of pour it till it floats. Where's my spoon? I don't even know which one of these bags it's in. There it is. I also think we'll uh, warm up with some hot chocolate. It really is cooling down and it's starting to feel, I know it's only August, but it's starting to feel like fall with that cold front moving in and it feels freaking amazing. All right, see, the typical MRE spoon. Let it kind of soak up the 
water there. You are about to witness the first time ever using an MSR pocket rocket, at least me using it, and the first time ever using this pot. I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, I see what it does. I'm sure many of you have used these, and I am a total amateur with it, so it's just like my other ones, but the way it folds and unfolds is kind of unique. This uh, may be Pocket Rocket 2. It doesn't say. I'm not sure. And there is a breeze, so... You tell Steve, why don't you get a proper windscreen? Well, my fellow viewers, because this is cheap and easy and lightweight and serves many purposes. Okay, let's see how this does. Easy peasy. Oh, I like it. I like how wide the flame is. We'll get the cocoa ready while the mac and cheese heats up. We'll have us a delicious, tasty meal with comforting, warm food. And a fast break for dessert. All right, let's give that a few minutes. Looking good. It needs to soften up for sure. I think I put just the right amount of moisture in there. It might be kind of soupy, but that's okay. I think most of it will absorb. Yeah, it's starting to smell like mac and cheese and hot dogs now. Foamy. Frothy. Delightful. Okay, it is bubbly, and I'm gonna leave the lid on and let that liquid kind of soak up like a mountain house type meal. I'll give it like 10 minutes to absorb the moisture. Well, while I'm waiting for that liquid to absorb into our dinner, um, I figured we'd look around a little bit. So, obviously there's the hammock, there's the table over there. And it looks like there was a tent here. It's nice and flat. It's a perfect spot for one. Somebody camped here recently. The woods are very thick. Most of this is scrub oak. You will hear people once in a while. There are hikers and mountain bikers. And those people camping over there are incredibly quiet. I love it. Thank God they're not blasting music. That last camp out I did at a campground will be the last one for a long time. It's quite peaceful up here and beautiful. Well, this looks pretty good. It's not too watery. I think I put a little too much water in it, but it looks good. Want some? Mm. That is so good. That is just amazing. <clears throat> Tastes like I just made it on my stove at home. It's, it's delicious. It's just right. It's just what I needed. So thank you again, Kent. See if that's right. Almost. My mac and cheese was awesome. I'm gonna have my dessert <laughs> and some hot chocolate and some diabetes. Want some?
that is dark and rich. I'm gonna have to wait on the cocoa. I got the water way too hot. And God bless Joe. Your timing was impeccable, my friend. This cookbook inspired me to get off the couch, get outside in nature, and have an adventure. Thank you, Joe, because it's friends like you and Kent that keep me going, that uh, when I feel overwhelmed, it seems like just at the right time, these people come along and kind of lift me out of the slump I'm in. They may not know they do it, but they do it. So thank you for that, Joe, and thank you for the food, Kent. And thank you for letting me use your hammock, Murphy. <laughs> um, I'm really uh, grateful to the people in my life that make these trips possible. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have uh, Patreon. I don't make money off YouTube. I strictly do this out of the adventure and the love of... I love creating videos and editing and... I enjoy it, that's why, and I enjoy sharing it with people. So some people get on here and don't understand that, and they think I'm trying to show what kind of a freaking expert I am in all this, all these different areas, and I, I'm not. I'm just hanging out and sharing it with you. So I want to thank the people out there who are viewing, too, that keep coming back and keep watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I know I make longer videos, but that's because I kind of approach them as a film rather than a clip. So, uh, thank you and welcome new people as well. I'm grateful that you're here and I hope you'll stick around. Um, there's many adventures to come still. I still hope to get up into the Uinas um, for reasons I just explained. I just didn't this weekend. So, let's see if this is any, any cooler. little bit, just enough. Well, next I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the stove together, if I can remember how, and gather some sticks before it gets too dark and start a little fire. So let's do that. You might be wondering why I didn't just cook on this. It was so easy to light, it puts off plenty of heat. It, uh, it pulls in air from the bottom here and drafts it up this way to feed the fire better, more efficiently. And I mean, I don't know all of the mechanics of it, but I mostly brought this for comfort's sake. And I knew I wouldn't be able to build a regular fire in my last 
my campground video, I cooked over the fire. Um, I just basically knew when I got up here that I would be really hungry. And so I brought the, the pocket rocket instead to cook on instead. And this just for comfort when it got darker out here. Um, it's already putting off incredible heat. Uh, it's like it's like a portable fire pit that you can put in your backpack. I've had this for several years. You could tell by the soot that was on it. Um, and I, every year I think I need to get that thing out and do a proper outing where I cook on it and everything. And I still plan to. But this time it's just for comfort's sake. There's something psychologically comforting about a campfire. One thing that I really like about this stove is uh, there's something very meditative about breaking the twigs and just feeding it as it dies down and just keeping it going. Uh, it's definitely not the kind of fire that you light and let it build and just walk away. <clears throat> you have to babysit it. Uh, but there's comfort in the simple I'd rather do this than watch TV anyway. It's kind of an awkward place for it, but I mean the concrete that it's sitting on is all crooked from years of erosion and that kind of thing. <clears throat> I could put it on the table, but the table's got a wooden top and this gets incredibly hot, so that's not safe. There's a piece of concrete over by the actual fire pit but I'd have to sit in the dirt. This way I can sit on the concrete here and tend to the fire and have a place for the sticks over the grill here. So that's why nothing too complicated. You guys hear those crickets? Well, now there's a plane flying over. I don't know if you can hear it, but there are tons of them out here. It's just really loud. I love it. When I was a little kid, I'm the youngest in my family, and uh, I have four sisters. One's passed away, one has dementia, and the other two are still doing pretty well uh, but they're a lot older than me and they were like second moms to me I was the the little boy in the family I also had a brother that passed away when I was he was 21 I was 19 he had some mental disabilities anyway I don't want to leave him out of this but my sisters were like second moms to me and I remember every little thing when I when you're a little kid nothing makes sense all you have is your imagination. All you have is when you hear a sound or see a sight. I remember turning to my mom one day, I was riding in the back of the car and I was looking at the mountains and they were covered, the peaks were covered in snow and we were driving through the city and I looked up and I said, mom, you know what that, those look like? I remember this conversation, it's crazy. I must have been four. It was just me and her, and she said, what? What did they look like? And I said, do you know that stuff that my tricycle seat is made of? She goes, metal? I said, yeah, those mountains look like metal. And that made sense to me. Um, they looked like metal sculptures or monuments to me <clears throat> from my four-year-old brain. I bring this up because I had a similar experience with crickets. I would hear the crickets at night and I would ask my my sisters what that sound was. 
And they would tell me it's crickets, they're chirping. And I said, what are crickets? And she, they said, they're little bugs, but they, they make pretty sounds. And I, in my head, tried to picture what a cricket looked like. And what I saw in my mind at that young age was like little stars, like, like looking up into the sky, the little sparkly, that they would, they don't, they weren't uh, fire bugs or anything like that. We don't have them here in Utah, but I pictured these crickets looking like every time they chirped, pulsing like a star. And that's what I compared them to. And to this day, all these years later, when I hear crickets in the summertime, I picture little stars out there pulsing and communicating with each other even though they're not glowing at all. <laughs> it's kind of funny. You have to be careful not to smother the fire either. You gotta give it enough room to, for the air to flow up and out. It gathered quite a few sticks. It didn't take long, there were a lot of twigs on the ground. This is the way to go if you're ever in a forest where the, the wood that's available is, it doesn't burn very well. I'm not speaking very well, but pine is awesome. The rest of the stuff around here, not so much, but for some reason the twigs off of the oak and the um, aspens burns pretty well. But the big, heavy logs and that kind of thing that you try to light up here, they just, they just smolder. They just put out a smoky fire and that's it. Cocoa's all gone. And so is the daylight. It's going to be a windy night. And that is because the warm front is being pushed out by a cold front. And it's supposed to move in overnight. The trees have kind of been speaking to me all day. I sure am glad I didn't stay home. And it's kind of comforting knowing there are people over there. Usually when I'm up here, by the time nighttime rolls around, all the day hikers and bike riders and whatever, they all leave and I'm the only one up here. It's peaceful, but it's also a little too quiet, you know, and uh, it's nice to know that those people are just over there. If something should happen to them or me, we can help each other out. At the same time, I'm so grateful they're quiet, so grateful. You know, my pocket bellows. Well, the sun went down before I could get the bear hang up, so we're going to try to hang it here in the dark. Well, it's not a perfect hang. It's only about 12 feet off the ground. I think it'll do. This was kind of cool over here. I was hanging it and I spotted this guy. Just hanging out for the night. 
I like dragonflies. I've never seen one at night. I guess that's what they do when the sun goes down. That should do. The forest is now officially dark. I'm not really tired. I think I'll sit by the fire a little longer. Just think. I really wish I'd brought my phone so I knew my kids were okay, but this really isn't different than being in the Uinas when I don't have cell phone reception. Like I said, I really hate how dependent on technology we've become. But just that peace of mind of knowing that they're alright makes me want to walk back to the car. It's like our fire went out. I don't know. I have a feeling I'm in for a night hike. Want to come with? It isn't about my cell phone, it's about peace of mind. Knowing my kids are okay. Those guys over there are all quiet. I don't know if they've already gone to bed, but the stars are just starting to come out. I'm guessing it's around 10 o'clock. I've got the trail camera set up. I'm gonna flip it on. It's aimed towards the table, because if I do get a raccoon family coming into camp, that's what they'll go for, is my table. The only things out are water, paracord, filters, nothing that smells like anything, really. This is clean. Just got foil in there. But they might try to open it to see what's in it. I don't know. Time for a night hike, guys. Back to the car. I just have to know that everything's okay with my kids. Papa Bear must know that his cubs are all right. Everything's okay here. I can still hear some voices. My battery bank there, I think I've got enough battery. Let's go on a night hike. Okay. Good thing I know this area really well. Right now we're headed towards the meadow. I've got dragonflies dive bombing my headlamp. <laughs> so this is 1200 lumens. That's the brightest setting there. You can see really well. Helps quite a bit with the anxiety in a situation like this. There are headlamps over that way. And this camera, having a hell of a time focusing on anything. There's a lot of dust in the air. Um, this is gonna keep going in and out of focus for now. You may have noticed it looked kind of smoky today but it's not actually smoke for a change. It's a 25 to 50 mile an hour winds are pushing through that front end and it's kicking up all kinds of dust in the air. So if you have allergies, this would probably be a nightmare for you, but I don't. So I'm gonna turn this down a notch. If we have the lamp up too high, it'll overheat. I don't need a lithium ion battery exploding on my head. Come on. I just got passed by two runners. A couple of guys in their 20s with headlamps on running the trail at night. When are you going to learn, Steve? Shows you how much I unconsciously don't want to carry my cell phone around with me. We're coming up on the pond. And look up that way, you might see some lights. That's where the parking lot is. We just gotta work our way back up there. There's the pond. There used to be a beaver dam in here. A really active beaver, but I don't see it anymore. Like it's totally gone. 
It was right out there where my light's hitting. I can hear people up there in the dark. That's weird, I don't see any headlamps. The things people do in the woods, man. I don't even want to know. Some girl yelling, ow, that hurts, ow. But not like she's in danger, more playful. It's just weird that there are no headlamps or anything. Okay, we made it. All for a cell phone. Oh no, I forgot my keys at camp. No, I'm just kidding. I got them right here. And there's my cell phone right in the console. I have a text. Uh, it's just from Joe. <laughs> No offense, just from Joe, but it's from Joe. Not my kids. Everything seems cool. All right. Car's dirty, sorry. So you can ask me if that was worth the trip and I'm gonna say yes, just for the peace of mind. Just knowing that my kids are okay. Back to camp. Got. Lock my car. I think I made it back to the car in about 15 20 minutes, and now I'm anxious to get back to camp because the voices I heard in the woods no headlamps, yelling and talking to each other really loud. It was not the people camped next to me. And their voices sounded like they were heading towards my camp area. One problem you face when you're closer to the city is A, more graffiti in a camp setting or a hiking area. And B, people who normally aren't in the outdoors going into the outdoors and saying, Hey, cool, look, a tent. Hey, neat, a campsite. There's no one here, let's steal some sh There's no one here, let's steal some stuff. You know, but what bothers me the most is why are they hiking through the woods in the middle of the night without headlamps of any kind, yelling and talking to each other? It's highly unusual to have no lighting whatsoever very strange I think everything's probably okay but I'd rather not take my chances and just get back to camp as fast as I can a little mousy <laughs> he doesn't know where to go it's so bright I can't see at the pond again okay back to our turn off almost there all right where is it where's our turn off is that it Boy, this is a little harder to find at night. <laughs> I think this is it. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. All right. This is home. <clears throat> All right. Whew. That sucked. But it was worth it. How many times in my life have I had to say that? Well, I made it back to camp. I just blew on this with the, my pocket bellows. 
got it going again. So those voices I keep hearing, apparently there's a camp of, it sounds like drunk kids. Down the path a ways. Now I'm seeing headlamps. I think the headlamps are our runners from earlier. Okay, I think I'm figuring out what's happening here. So the headlamps I just saw came from the direction of those loud voices. And it is the people who camp next to us. It looks like it's the mom and dad. And mom had a blanket and a pillow with her. <laughs> Sorry about that. It goes dim and the camera can't focus. Anyway, I think mom and dad snuck off with a blanket and a pillow and were making all that noise in the woods. And now they're back at camp. <laughs> if you're gonna sneak off into the woods, Maybe keep it down, because I could hear them all the way down the trail back to the parking lot. And it was pretty obvious it was them when they came out of the woods with their headlamps on. And now it's totally quiet over there where they were. Oh my goodness, okay. I'm down to my last few sticks, so... Let's just load those in and let it be for the night. Got a couple sticks left. Of course there's more than that in the whole forest, but that's what I've got. supposed to look. Well guys, I'm going to hang out here and watch the fire die. The stars are out and they're beautiful. I'm going to check those out for a little while. And then I'll climb in the hammock and we'll call it a night. But first I'm going to text my kids and just make sure they're doing okay. Why? Because I can. Well, it's creepy time. <laughs> it always is. I am nestled into bed, getting ready to figure this quilt out. It's kind of a wrestling match. Not the best choice I made. I could have just brought a quilt that just covers me and been just as comfortable. It is about 50 degrees already, and I think it's... What time is it here? It is 11.44 p.m. So it's bedtime. I'm going to take some melatonin and uh, watch some videos. I hung out by the fire for quite a while. I just kept feeding sticks into it 
for the longest time and uh, just just relaxed, just enjoyed being out in nature. So now it's time to get warm. It's it's pretty chilly. It's probably going to be in the 40s tonight. The forecast said 57, but I disagree. My thermometer already says 50, and it's not even midnight. So um, the only thing I don't like about this quilt is trying to get it situated underneath me in the hammock. It's probably easier in a tent, but I'll figure it out. So that's the plan. Um, just gonna settle in here and go to sleep. And I will see you in the morning. There's not much else to say, but good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the werewolves bite. Good night, guys. I'll see you in the morning. guys the sun has just risen it's about 7 36 in the morning Said something really weird happened during the night this is my second pair of socks you can see these are actually compression socks that I wear under my hiking socks. I went to bed with my socks on, <laughs> my, my hiking socks over my compression socks. These are wool. I woke up without them on, but I have no memory of taking them off. So I must have gotten restless in my sleep and pulled them off. Kind of bizarre. I've never taken my socks off and not remembered it. <laughs> At first I thought, did I bring them? How are you, neighbor? What are you going to do today? Mr. Rogers. Wilderness. It was a good night. It was peaceful. I did get inundated with raccoons. I don't know what I got on the trail camera, but a couple times I heard noises and turned on my headlamp. And right over here in these trees, there were baby raccoons climbing the trees. They didn't like my headlamp too much. They were just little. They were just, it looks like they left my stuff alone. So that's good. Everything and anything that smelled like anything went up in the bear bag. I don't know, I call it a, the food bag. So I don't think I had too many problems, but I think my neighbors did, which I kind of saw coming. That many people camping together. Somebody's bound to leave something out. And I don't know, there's, there's two tents over there, maybe four or five people. 
I heard them get up at one point and were kind of talking amongst themselves excitedly. <laughs> That's exactly what I went through when I camped in that spot at the beginning of the season with my kids. Well, let's have a look around. Let me get my shoes on and we'll walk around a little bit before everybody wakes up and starts coming in here. the meadow. My neighbors are starting to stir up in there. Oh, we're gonna go this way, just check things out. There have been a couple of times up in here where I was hiking out and encountered moose. Um, one time I was hiking from a campsite up here, heading down, and they were crossing the trail right through here. And they just stopped and stared at me, and I was like, backing off like this. Nice, Moosey. Don't kill me. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is the old road right here. This open area straight through here is a loop that goes around and comes out this side. And there were camp spots in here, but there aren't any more. It's all overgrown, nature's reclaimed it. Most triumphantly, I must say. You can see kind of a pathway through here. People have walked. I'm guessing that all of the yelling that I heard last night came from down in there. Man, it's a beautiful morning, isn't it? It's so green. Well, not so green over here. You can tell where the sun hits all day. It's all green and dark down in here. And then when you get in the open areas, it starts turning brown. Utah's not quite having the drought it once had a couple years ago and years before that. We're getting caught up. I've shown this before, but I, I like to hike down to it and check it out. There's a campsite right over here. Oh, here comes a bike rider. Hello, how's it going? That beautiful sunrise. Anyway, the camp campsite's right over here. And since I managed to get my phone, there will be some Instagram pictures from this trip eventually. This is nice and cleaned up. Seems like it used to be bigger. I've had my hammock right here before. I've even put my tent right here. Only thing about this site is you get a lot of people coming right through here on that trail. And you're pretty exposed. They can see you right off where that other one that we're at is more isolated, more enclosed. sunshine nothing like a morning walk to get your metabolism going we'll check out more of the views on the way out I'm gonna hike back a little different way than we came in so the outro will be a little bit different we will hike, of course, down to the meadow there, but I have a different route that we can go that's a little bit scenic.
God, that's just so beautiful. I can't believe that used to be a road. <laughs> the memories people must have had here. And I moved up here over a decade ago, up this direction anyway, from the Salt Lake area. This was still an active campground. Still not sure why they shut it down. Probably a funding issue. Glad it's here though, it's served me well many times. Anyway, let's go back to camp. Get that breakfast going. I used most of my Nalgene water last night. And just to be safe with the raccoons, put the rest of it up here. I think that's plenty for this morning, for our needs. And then uh, I also realized I left out my fire kit, which has, um, Aspit tablets in it, these things, and they smell fishy. So, I also didn't clean my look at that, it's covered in hot chocolate, gross. I didn't clean my cup, as you can see there, and I realized it, so I hung it up here too to avoid problems with raccoons. It is currently 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, got the cup down. There's our bear bag. I call it a bear bag, it's really just a food bag. It's not just up there for bears, it's up there for things like raccoons and squirrels and such. You never know what's gonna climb and try to get into your stuff. So it's a food bag, but it sounds so rough. It's my feed bag. Like a horse has. I don't know. Anyway, let's get it down. Nothing like doing dishes in the mountains. Camp towel, a little bit of water, <laughs> clean enough. <laughs> This morning's breakfast is brought to you by Maple and Brown Sugar Instant Oatmeal. Look at all those bugs from previous trips. Some of those guys traveled with me from the Uinas. Some are from my house. There are some bugs this morning. Clean enough. <laughs> There's my garbage. I found a beer bottle. There's a couple more down there. I'll probably try to pack out if it'll fit. I think it will. Chocolate Supreme Cocoa again. I'm gonna use some of this fake Mio <laughs> energy stuff. I'm I'm so thirsty. I think the combination of the oatmeal and the 
hot chocolate might make it worse. So, and I need to perk up. Ah. So let's talk about how I slept while we're waiting for our water. Kind of a crooked shot because it's sitting on a crooked bench, but I slept really well after about 1.30 in the morning. I went to bed closer to midnight. It took me a while. I watched some videos. I took some melatonin with those raccoons. I kept hearing them in my camp <laughs> and I kept lighting them up with my spotlight. Uh, they were cute, little tiny guys, but they're, God, they're obnoxious. They're so loud. Trash pandas have them in my yard sometimes too. Um, anyway, the quilt did not fit me very well. I, you know, I think my son, he's a little smaller than me and I'm talking about my older son, Murphy. Oh, the water's boiling. Hang on. Some more water for the oh man. Now where was I? Since my son Murphy is a little smaller than me, he's probably five eight. I'm five ten. He's kind of got the same build as me, um, but a little smaller. And I think he ordered the large quilt. I would use an extra large just to be able to wrap around me all the way. And I couldn't wrap it around me. I tried and tried. It just wasn't wide enough. And I've had this problem with Outdoor Vitals products before. I've got an extra large zero degree sleeping bag that I can only use as a quilt because you can't possibly zip it up. So I think since they started outsourcing to China, they've been going with Chinese extra large and Chinese people are much smaller than Americans. I'm not talking about fat or anything. I'm talking about just the bone structure in general. What I ended up doing was relying on my under quilt for my warmth underneath. And then I put my feet in the foot box of the quilt and just draped it over the top of me instead of wrapping it around me. And that did the trick. So it works well just to go over me, but there's no way to wrap it around me. It's just too small. And it has little buckles that if you wrap it around you, you can snap together if you want to use it more like a sleeping bag. But I love the quilt idea much more than a sleeping bag. And uh, thought I'd give it a try without thinking that maybe he um, was a different size than me. Anyway, I slept pretty good. I had to inflate that pillow several times during the night. Whatever leak is in it is getting worse, and I need to figure out where it is and how to fix it. I think I have a patch kit at home. Got to boil. So I am going to eat out of the cooktop today. Some of the footage you saw at the beginning of this video of me driving up Ogden Canyon, you saw how windy it was um, in one section of that road. Earlier this summer, uh, father and daughter were killed on that road. They were rounding a corner and there was a truck pulling a trailer with a backhoe on the top of the trailer but it wasn't secured very well and with those curves the way they are um, this 
father and daughter came around the corner just at the same time as this trailer, this truck pulling this trailer, and the backhoe fell off of the trailer and smashed their car. Just landed on them and smashed them like bugs. And not to be graphic, but that's what happened. It was very tragic, one of those freak accidents where the guy's load, I guess, wasn't secured. And the dad was a CEO of a company. I'll put up here on the screen um, what company. It was just, just awful, just tragic and sad. And they were from the town of Uinta, which isn't very far from Ogden. And up on the hillside, the town of Uinta has a U that lights up, you know, just like a lot of college area towns. Uh, Weber State University is nearby. There's a, a letter on the mountain for them. I mean, all the high schools, Ben Lomond High School has one on the mountain. So uh, Uinta changed their U to the guy's initials, I believe. I could be wrong about this. It's been a while since I read the story, but uh, they turned it to the family's initials in honor of their passing for several days. It's such a sad story. It just proves that you never know when you leave the house what might happen when you go out the door. It might be the last time you go out the door. This might be the last time I put these clothes on. <laughs> Even though I wear the same clothes on every outing, <laughs> it's just convenient. But, uh, yeah. So sad, so unexpected. Left behind a company and a legacy. Apparently was a really good man. And uh, it was just sad to see that happen. Want some? I used to do oatmeal every morning on these backpacking trips that I would take, and I got tired of it. That and Pop Tarts, Cliff Bars. That's been so long since I've done it that it's okay now. I have to say that this trip cost me almost nothing except gas to get up here. I had all the gear, I had all this food in my house. Get off my water bag. That's what she said. That makes no sense. Even the cook pot we're using. Thanks, Joe. The food we ate. Thanks, Kent. <laughs> uh, this other stuff. I love this ramen. Um, it's expensive, though. And it was on sale, so I snagged a bunch. I basically got it for half price. All this other stuff is MRE stuff from the past that's still good. Borrowing some of my son's gear, using some of my own gear. Um, it just worked out that I was able to come up here for almost free. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get up here. There is some construction. In the canyon, there's some construction. and it slowed me down quite a bit. All done with breakfast. Undecided on the future today. No reason for me to rush back home. Scraps is probably going nuts because he's by himself, but I'm close to home and he's got the pet door and food and water and a fence yard and he wanted to come with. He saw me put the pack on and he gets excited because he wants to have those adventures, but can't get him to sleep in the hammock. And I really didn't want to bring a tent, but I really needed this getaway. All the stress that I came home with yesterday morning is gone. I feel completely reset. It's so important, if you can, to get out into nature. And nature can be your backyard. It can be a park, city park. It can be just touch grass. <laughs> get outside and touch grass. Get away from the, the electronics and the constant bombardment of information and the politics and the, everything else that's getting thrown at us right now and just be. It's so easy to forget what really matters until you get out here and then it all makes sense. That other stuff doesn't matter. So I think I'm going to clean up for sure. 
but I am undecided on whether or not I'm going to stay until lunch and do some exploring or if I'm just going to hoof it home. Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about it for a little while. There's usually a lot of ashes left from this little stove, so I'm going to have to clean that up and try to cover it with some dirt or something. See what I mean? Well, I think what I'm going to do, now that I've had some time to kind of ponder it, I think our hike out will be part of the exploration of the area. I usually have a big old outro with all these awesome scenes, but I think it'd be better if I film those scenes and continue talking to you, um, showing them to you, explaining some of them, and some of my history up here, I guess. Yeah, we'll just make our way back to the car after I clean this disaster up. Down there, and this one. And my cozy little hammock set up. You'll notice I put the uh, tarp up pretty open. I didn't lower it like I said I might during the night, and that's because this steady breeze has been blowing through here and it's been so nice that it's really just there to catch any debris or any sprinkles that might come down and provide shade and that kind of thing. I think 62. Not too shabby. Anyway, let's clean this up and continue exploring the area. That is it. Table is clear. Our little fire area is clear, mostly. I mean, it's not perfect, but it'll do. And of course, our hammock area is completely clear. Hung in between these two trees. Everything's on my back. I've really enjoyed this outing. I really needed it. Let's do some exploring and head out of here. And uh, I'll show you a little bit different trail. We have to go back to the meadow, down the road a little ways, and then cut down. And I'll show you a different trail that leads back to the car. In the springtime, this meadow is incredibly green. You can hear a lot of people hiking up right now, so hopefully the trail I take will lead us away from them. That's where we're coming from. 
That's where we're going. Actually, not that way, but that way. There are so many people coming up here. It's a Sunday morning, it's nice and cool. I don't blame them a bit. <laughs> Makes filming kind of challenging. This is the third time we've encountered our friend the pond here. <laughs> okay, there is just group after group coming down. I wouldn't be able to film on the way out that way anyway. So we're going to go down here. This is the road less traveled. I haven't even been able to film for quite a stretch because of all the people. Okay, you may hear some remnants of kids yelling up there on the main trail. Luckily, most people take the more popular route. I've never really been one to do that. If you saw my car camping video, uh, camping in a campground and my miserable experience there. The camping part itself was amazing. The food was great, but boy, talk about a bunch of noisy people. They practically brought their houses with them and all their music and all the trappings of modern life. And they missed all of this because of it. Look at that. I've caught fish in here before. Brook trout. Not seeing any at the moment. Last time I was here, I didn't see any either. It looks like we have a beaver blocking things up, so that might be contributing. Up there is the old highway you can hike down. No longer used for cars. Back towards the mountain is our main trail. No, thank you. It's amazing how beautiful this is, and yet all of those people up there following the main road have no idea that just a little ways off the trail is this. So that's one spot I wanted to show you. I see a fish pooling over there, down past this little dam. So there are fish in here still, just not right here. Usually you walk by and you just see them scatter. But not this time. So from here we have to backtrack to get to the trail that leads back to the car. Our turn off is right up here. This little guy right here will lead us back to the car into those beautiful trees without any people.
this usually has a bunch of water running in it. I'm really surprised that it's so dry. There's usually quite a beautiful river running through here. Well, maybe that's just a spring runoff thing. It is late August. So, not until next year, probably. Isn't this better than that heavily trafficked road? The only thing missing is the river. I was kind of hoping to see that. It's so thick and green in here, it's incredible. You could definitely stealth camp in here and no one would know you were here. No one knows I'm here right now. It's more of the dry creek bed down there. It's so silent, it's usually really noisy with rushing water. Not too much further, we'll be back at the car. Time to go back to people in their ways. Starting to see shiny cars. Whew. These little hills are kind of a pain. They're there for mountain bikers, but wow. <sighs> yeah, the parking lot's right there. Well, guys, I think that's the end of this journey. I'm gonna head back to the car. I'm gonna go home. I have some store-bought refrigerated sushi waiting for me. I always have a, some kind of reward at the end of the journey. That's my treat for getting home. That and seeing my buddy Scraps. So, before I get to the parking lot, do yourselves a favor. Get off the couch, get outside in nature, and have an adventure. The views are spectacular. And if you can't get off the couch for whatever reason, Come along with me. I could use the company. We'll see you in the next adventure. Take care, guys.